Hey friends out there in YouTube land, Robert Ham here once again. And you know, this is uh, today, it's a couple of days we've gone without a video. I've been a little under the weather, so I wanted to really kick that back off now that I'm starting to feel a whole lot better. And today's video is about the Portra uh, 160 on the Olympus 35RD. Now, when you watched that, I hope that you took special recognition of this extraordinarily versatile film. Uh, Portra 160 is a, a slow, ish film with nice uh, fine grain this little opaque box and everything that it comes with is really quite a, a nice film to shoot with and what i like about it and, and you'll notice this go back and look at the video again what you'll notice is that the first part of the video up until uh the little grassy meadow when the one you see the landscape in there about halfway through um that little grassy meadow right there is very important because Prior to that, all the images prior to that were overexposed by two stops. Now, I did that intentionally because I wanted to see just how much I could push it uh, and still get good detail, especially in the highlights when it was time to pull that information back out of there. And uh, I was able to recover quite a bit of detail. I had these images um, developed by the Find Lab, and they seem to do an excellent job. Although for whatever reason, usually I get back about a 15 to 18 megabyte file when I order the Fat Boys, and uh, this time I got back 9 and 10 megabyte files. So I'm going to call them and ask them about that. But normally the Fat Boys, nice and big size with lots of information in there. Um, so that was the only thing that's a little bit different. In fact, I had two rolls, and that was uh, the only thing that was a little bit different. Shooting with this camera, uh, was an absolute treat. I love I love this camera, and this is very similar to the one that you guys can win. In fact, you you might win this camera. Um, remember, I've got a, a uh, giveaway going on on YouTube right now. So as long as you hit that subscribe button, you can enter to win my camera. Currently, the one going is the Olympus 35R C, like this guy right here. And uh, the differences are minor, just a, a different lens. Out of the two, uh, this the R C is actually my favorite for size. Uh, even though they look the same when you're looking at them on the camera. This this right here is uh, a little bit smaller. I really enjoy using it. Uh, but however, I use this camera, and this is a treat. Either way, the rangefinder style of shooting really works for me. When we sit down there and, uh, you know, the little pin in the little prism, uh, we move that rangefinder back and forth. It works great. Um, the shutter speeds are nice and accurate, so I didn't seem to see much uh, burning of, uh, of the film from one end to the other when I was using one five hundredth of a second or uh, one two fiftieth of a second. It was all working very well. The majority of the images in the first half were shot at f4 and f5.6 at around one two fiftieth and one um, one twenty-fifth of a second, just depending, and those uh, allowed for me to shoot a little bit overexposed. Uh, sometimes shooting at uh, f uh, five six and one one twenty-fifth is a real nice combination because you can pull so much detail out of uh, the highlights with Portra. There's a couple of stops of latitude that you got. However, if you underexpose, it's very far less forgiving. A, a stop to maybe a half a stop, depending on the situation. The nice part about these images all across the board is the grain. Now, uh, the grain's a little bit more pronounced when overexposed and underexposed, but you'll notice the difference in the second half of the photos where the sky turned from white to blue. Now, a couple things to keep in mind when I was shooting the Portsmouth light ship, um, it was an overcast day, which is why I was messing around with F4 and F5.6 at around 125th and 1 200th following the Sunny 16 rule. What I learned here is that in order to get exactly what I want, I, will, uh, I won't overexpose, I'll pull it back just a little bit uh, and so that I'll, I'll shoot more naturally, probably F5.6 instead of F4, or maybe even um, F8 instead of F5.6 uh, and F4, somewhere around there. That would definitely be much more helpful in keeping a lot of detail in the sky. When we got to Ocean City, Maryland, that's the second half where the skies are blue. I was shooting specifically um, with, uh, with the Sunny 16 rule. I was shooting that rule, uh, hand to God, kind of, as you might say. So I was outdoors in the bright sunlight, started F16, 160. I was treating Portra also as a 100 speed film even though it was 160. So there's another two thirds of a stop difference um, from 100 to 200. So I was treating as, as a um, 
two, uh, it was a 100 speed film. So I was shooting it at uh, f16 at 1 one uh, twenty fifth. And when you look at those images, goodness, now you're starting to see something that's really special because that's where Portra is really shining. We've got a bright, beautiful day, some clouds in the sky, and you have this great gradation of color across beautiful blues, not too overly saturated, right? Beautiful blues in the sky as well as gorgeous skin tones. And that's something that's really quite lovely about this film. So I've been shooting Ektar and Portra quite a bit, and I like them both for separate things. If you're going to shoot Ektar, you're pretty much guaranteed because of its vibrancy to get a nice gradation of skies, specifically over uh, saturated. You're going to get saturated tones, which is cool. I have no problem shooting that. I like a vibrant image, even of people. But if you're going for more portraiture instead of just kind of walking around in landscape shots, then you definitely want Portra um, or uh, I guess 400H by Fuji uh, if you want to shoot in the 2 or 400 range. Uh, that's fine, but Portra here with Kodak is excellent. Now, what you'll notice about it is that with Portra, if you're within your proper exposure latitude and you're not overexposing, you're going to get the nice blue in the sky, but the minute you overexpose by one or two stops, the sky is going to be wiped out and turn white on your original scans. However, you can recover quite a bit of data. You can recover that sky very easily in Lightroom, but you'll never recover it to the extent that you would have if you had just shot a little bit more uh, carefully in the first place. So although I was able to bring some of that blue back, um, there are some parts at two stops overexposed that you're just losing the information. However, uh, I enjoyed it one way or the other, and I hope that you liked that video, guys. I'm Robert Ham with RobertHamPhotography.com. You can catch me over on Facebook and YouTube right here at Rob um, at Robert Ham Photography forward slash Robert Ham Photography. You can also find me over on Instagram as well as Twitter at Rob Ham Photo. Don't forget to go ahead and win my camera. This is a great deal. Just win it. All you have to do is win my camera. Just subscribe. If you follow me on Twitter and Instagram and Facebook and you like me on YouTube, um, you know, uh, Facebook as well and you follow me on YouTube, each one of those gets you an entry into the drawing to take place live November 20th, 2016, 6 p.m. live on YouTube. That's Eastern Standard Time. For more details, just check the YouTube page. Don't forget to share this. Let your buddies know about it. I'm always testing film and doing something. The more interest I get, the more cameras I give away. And I film test all of these cameras. In fact, this isn't this one isn't ready because I've I've still got some work to do on it. But uh, as you can see, <laughs> there's plenty of them up here that got your name on it. Just go ahead and subscribe. God, guys, take it easy. And as always, keep shooting, my friends. Sometimes I feel like a pirate when I did that. I just look like a pirate. Oh, whatever.